everyone, it's Rachel Gregg here and I'm just checking that everything is a-okay. Just let me know if um, if you're here with me this afternoon. It's uh, it's 4pm here in Australia and which means it's really early in the UK. It's about 6am over there and I'm not quite sure what time it is over in America and Canada but... Uh, but um, hopefully it is a good time for you guys. I haven't uh, pulled you out of bed or made you go to bed early or something. And uh, 7 a.m. Uh, and um, I'll just try and keep up with the comments as much as I can. But, um, but yeah, please leave any questions in the comments and I'll try and get to them as I go throughout the stream. Or even at the end, I'll just check all the comments and uh, answer any questions at the end. 1 a.m. Arlene, wow, good for you. Thank you for joining me. 1am as well. Gosh, sorry for uh, for making you either stay up late or get up really early, but um, I'm really pleased that you are here. So my name is Rachel Gregg and welcome to my Wonderlust Live. Uh, this is my first one uh, for Wonderlust. I'm doing three over this weekend. So there'll be uh, the one that I'm doing today, which is um, on stamped collage papers. And then the one I'm doing tomorrow will be stamped Art Journal Borders. And then on Monday, we'll be doing um, stamped... Uh, what are we doing Monday? We're doing inky Art Journal backgrounds. So I'm really looking forward to sharing some tips and techniques with you throughout the weekend. And if you've signed up for Wonderlust Live, then you'll have access to all the other lives that are happening throughout the weekend as well. Um, if you haven't signed up yet and you've just come across my YouTube on YouTube or this live on YouTube then in the description box below, you'll find all the information there on how you can join Wonderlust Live. It's a free event. What we're doing this weekend is celebrating International Artists Day. So to do that, we're, uh, all the teachers or some of the teachers that are teaching in next year's Wonderlust are coming together and doing some free live videos for you to just get you inspired and have a fun little weekend together and share some of our ideas. So... <laughs> Excuse me. The um, So what I'm doing today here with you just for the next half an hour or so is I'm going to show you some ideas on how to use stamps in your art journals and how you can make collage papers and what you can do with them and how you can use them in your art journals. So um, just a little bit of background here. If you've not... Um seen me before or been on my YouTube channel. Uh, my name's Rachel, like I said, and I'm in Australia. So uh, right now it's, uh, where are we? Spring. Really nice day today. I can see outside the window there, a little bit overcast, but uh, it's a little bit humid here as well. So um, it's a bit warm and we're going into summer. So that's where we are at the moment. And what I do in with my crafting is I like to do a lot of art journaling and travel journaling as well. So this uh, little technique that I'm gonna show you is really good for travel journals because it's one of those things that you can prep ahead of time and then take it with you when you're traveling. So then you can add some extra stamped layers without actually having to lug all your stamps with you when you're traveling. So it means you can do some pre-prep for some of your travels. So that's a really cool thing as well. Um, so let's get started. I think what I wanna do is I wanna show you some of my pages using this, and then I'm gonna walk through all of the uh, substrates that we're going to use and the inks and some stamp ideas. So if you're going to stamp along with me, then now's the time to grab some supplies. So you don't need a lot, all we need is some stamps. Now that doesn't matter if it's rubber, clear, foam stamps will work as well, um, hand carved stamps will work as well. So any of those types of stamps will work for this technique. We need some ink pads. So the ink pads that I recommend are some permanent ink pads because we will be using some gel medium to stick them into our um, journals. So you need something that won't bleed. So, and I'll kind of explain that as I'm going along. And um, <laughs> I just saw a comment there. Rachel, what are those yummy goodies on your shelves? There's lots of things right behind me here. This is my little art studio where I've got all my stamps, my, my pens, you can see here. Um, more stamps, that's some of my artwork there. If I move my head, you can see my paints and various other inks and things. I'll be using some of these ones here on Monday, so come back and check that out. 
down here, more ink sprays, more ink sprays, and then there's some yeah other cool stuff down there. So it's a uh, it's a nice little creative hub in this room. Um, so where was I? I was talking about inks, stamps, stamps. Yeah, you can use anything, and then the um, substrates which we can use tissue paper and book pages and all that so i'm going to flip the camera around so you can see the fun stuff i mean i know that stuff's fun but you know you don't need to see me for too much longer so we'll just flip this around um, again leave any comments or questions i'll try and read them as i go but if i miss something which i'm likely to because i'll be too um into you know demonstrating basically what we're going to be doing so i will go through them at the end and try and uh answer any questions after the event as well so all right let's get uh, moving around and i'll just make sure i can do this here we go yeah flip it around here okay so i've just pulled out a little bit of a few of my art journals here just to show you basically what we will be doing and I'll just move some of these around. So what I mean about collage papers are things that we can use on like book pages, like stamped book pages, and also stamping onto tissue. And I'll show you uh, what I mean by that. So these little stamped pieces here are on tissue. I've got another couple of post-it notes just to show you a few pieces here. This is all stamped collage papers as well. And you can see here how it's really good to build layers in your art journal pages. And another one here. So these are just some random art journal pages that I've done uh, just using some stamped collage pieces. And this one here, this is using some sewing pattern collage which is already a tissue so it's really cool to use but then this one here is also using some stamped bits so you can see here there's a stamped bit of collage there's some stamped and then i've got done some other little stamped bits as well and then up the back here and this is just another one here where i've used uh, stamped pieces here on other different substrates so and they're just really cool to build layers for your art journals so that's just to quick give you a quick show on what you can do with them. So the stamps you can use, I'm just going to show you a variety of stamps that I'll be using in today's demo, but probably not all of them, otherwise we would be here for a while. But I just want to show you some stamp sets that work really well for this technique. So these stamp sets here, like Darkroom Door stamp sets, have quite a few different stamps on the one set which is why we sell them as a set and then you can buy the individual um, ones as well so we've got long ones we've got little texture ones there's a variety of different ones that we have at darkroom door but um, the sets themselves often have some large images and then some smaller images so it's these smaller ones combined with the larger ones that make it a really good set to use for creating some collage um, papers. So the correspondence one, that's the one that I'm going to use for this, but also some of these ones that have got solid pieces in them as well, or solid stamps, that's what works really well for um, collage papers, especially if you're going onto book pages. Uh, this one here, the carved leaves, so you can see here, they're kind of like more silhouette images, and there's a lot that you can do with those because they are such a solid stamp the ink colour that you choose to use will be a big impact on your collage piece. So this one, I want to show you something really fun with this one. And then you can see here, like with this number medley again, how we've got some larger stamps. And then you've got the smaller stamps, which are really great fillers. So I'll show you what I mean by that. And then, of course, flowers, butterflies, any kind of imagery works really well. So if you've never seen collage paper before, I'll show you that as well so you know what I'm talking about. So basically, often it's tissue. So tissue is usually what a lot of people use because it's when you adhere it into your art journal page, the tissue basically disappears, like the actual substrate disappears, and then you're just left with the image or the design that is on that tissue. So that's why a lot of people like it for layering because it's it kind of goes invisible, the tissue, and then you've just got the image which makes it look like you've stamped directly into your art journal. Now that's really cool because it means that 
if you've got a really lumpy, bumpy art journal, then you'll still get this whole image because if you stamped some of these images into an art journal that's textured, you may lose some of that detail. Like for instance, in that feather, you may lose some of that because the actual surface is really textured. Here's another one. This is another collage paper that um, that's Tim Holtz has done. And so you can see, you can get some really nice designs. This one's a nice thin one here. So when you adhere that down onto your pages, yeah, that tissue will then uh, blend in with the background and then you will see um, just the design. And I think I've got, if I grab one of my journals over here, so this is one of my journals. Now I've used that tissue on one of these pages, on this page here. Oh, it's a different, oh, this one's a coloured tissue. But you can see there how it's just blended in to that background of that journal. And I did use the dark tissue, that black and white one. See here how that's the black and white tissue. And then I've just stuck it on. Now the background of this journal is white, so it'll just be white when it shows through. But see how nice that design comes through, even though this is a textured journal. So that's why pre-stamping some collage papers or having some pre-made collage papers is really cool for your art journals. But often I think it's really nice to be making your stamps versatile and then you can make your own collage papers as well to use. Okay, so here's the stamps. Now these um, hand carved stamps are really cool to use as well because they uh, just give you some different effects because you can use them with inks and with paint as well for your projects. Uh, we've got some abstract stamps. So the abstract stamps are a long design and as you can see there, they're all abstract. So that's what's really cool for uh, building layers if you don't want specific imagery and you just want patterns and backgrounds so that's what's really cool and then these little texture stamps so our texture stamps are just a smaller version of our background stamps and so they've got a nice little edge on them which isn't like harsh so that means you can just stamp them onto your pages comes in a variety of designs all right so let's put these ones away and that's the stamps. Now the ink pads, the ones that I recommend for using for your collage papers are archival um, or any other permanent ink pad. I'm just gonna get some more colors out here because they come in a huge range of colors. I think there's like, I don't know, 50, 40 something different colors of archival ink. Um, so these ones are a water, waterproof ink. So they're a permanent waterproof ink. And the reason they're so good for collage is because of that uh, waterproof property. So that means when we adhere it to our art journals using a wet medium, like a gel medium, that gel, that wetness will not interfere with the inking. So that means that this is waterproof. That wetness won't make that run or bleed or anything like that. It'll just keep that stamping in place where you need it to be or on the collage. So um, that means then if you are using an ink pad like a Distress Ink or a Distress Oxide Ink or any other water-based ink, uh, if you are adhering it with a gel medium, then that means that that ink could uh, blend out a little bit. Not necessarily a bad thing. You might want it to be a softer effect. So it's not a hard and fast rule. It just means that if you want your image to be uh, completely intact and all the detail, then I'd recommend an archival ink. But if you want it to be a softer kind of a watercolor effect, uh, then you could go with one of the water-based inks, but just bear in mind that um, it could easily, uh, you know, just run everywhere, just depending on how much um, watery or how watery your gel medium is. So that's just something to bear in mind. Uh, the other thing is if you actually are going on to other substrates, not just tissue, then you can just use something like a, um, a glue stick. So then that means that you can use other types of ink pads as well. But you've also got to keep in mind of what you're putting on top of it in your art journal page as well. That's why I like using the permanent ink because if your ink is permanent and you know your images are permanent, then whatever you put on top won't harm the collage sheets. Okay, so I've just got that ready to go. So I'm just going to show you now some substrates that you can use. 
Okay, so we've got tissue. Now, there's a couple of different tissues that I like to have on hand. And so you can see here, there's a few different colors. So I've got white, and then this one here is a cream vanilla. And then this one here is also a white, but it's kind of in between. It's like, a, it's white, but it's um, not as white as this one, if you just pull it out. Yeah, this is the, um, the Dina Wakely tissue. So it's pretty much the same, but it's just a, a tiny bit warmer than, than this white one. And then this cream is warmer again. So the reason I like to have the different ones on hand is because of the different surfaces in your journals. So if you're going straight into a white journal, then a white uh, tissue paper will be best if you want it to evaporate in the background. Um, if you're working on like a dilutions journal, and I'm just trying to find one in front of me. The, um, so for instance, I've got one here and we'll probably stick some down on this journal later. So you can see here how the creamy um, surface of the Dilutions journal would match more to this creamy tissue. So that's why I like to have some creamy tissue on hand. If I've got a, yeah, you can see here, see how that's a little, just a little bit more creamier. So if you're working in a Dilutions journal, then a cream tissue works really well. Um, whereas the white tissue, it'll still work, of course, but sometimes if you're going on to a darker background, um, something like that, then it may just show up so that the edges of that tissue may just show up a little bit on that, um, on that background. So I just like to have a couple there on hand. And then show you some other substrates. Okay, so then we have sheet music, really good if you want to add some extra colour and patterns to that. Uh, book pages, any old book pages, even all these other little offcuts, these are really cool. Now, with the book pages, you've got different thicknesses, you've got different textures. I mean, this one's really thin, really smooth. This one's a bit thicker. It's like the text is already a bit thicker on that one. You've got tiny text, big text. It, you know, they're all different. Um, and then even different colorings. You can see some are more creamy, some are more white. So they're all just gonna give you a different effect. So, but they're all really cool to have to create with and stamp onto. Then we have things like lunch bags. So craft paper. So this is really cool. This actually came in um, an order that we had placed so that was just packaging in the box so i mean that's really nice brown paper it's really got a nice texture to it as well so that'll work really well so yeah keep any kind of packaging that you might get this is um an envelope like a a bill like that came in the mail and had a really nice kind of like rose pink insert so i mean you can use the window if you like in your art journal as well but you can just use this really nice pink side so that just gives you an extra thing to work on and then anything else that you've used so like i've got marbled sheets here i've also got like even gel prints i'll go and grab some um where you may not have finished the gel print or it's like a nice little light uh, background i'll just see because i did have them out here we are so see these gel prints, these were just tests and I did these. These are on uh, like a, a rice deli paper and, um, and so they weren't fabulous gel prints but they're really good now for adding some stamped images and then using them as collage papers. So any, um, any old gel prints that you think weren't fabulous as gel prints would make really good collage sheets. Okay, so there's a few of our substrates. So first off, I just want to show you about stamping onto tissue. And what we'll do here is I'll just use this, this one here. I'll also stamp onto the creamy one. And if you want to stamp or create like a full piece and then you can tear it up, this is why I like using these stamps here. And what I do is I start out with the large stamps. So I'm just going to do both at once and I'm just going to work pretty quickly but if you want to um, take your time with this by all means just take your time and 
follow along like later on if you want to come back you can re-watch the video and just work at your own pace so then you can pause the video whenever you need to so i've just stuck down this stamp onto an acrylic block and i'm now just inking it from the top and i just move that ink pad around it's a lot easier to use the ink pad to the stamp rather than the stamp to the ink pad and then i will just stamp that straight up there on the page i'll ink it again so i'm just going to ink up a few areas of this i'll only do a small bit of the uh, the cream just to give you an idea of what it looks like in between the white and the cream These little text stamps, they're really um, handy to have. I mean, not only for making backgrounds like this, but just adding little extra elements. Okay, I'm just gonna butt that up there. So then when I go here, I'm stamping both at once. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that there and I'm gonna move on to the postcard. And for this one here, I'm just using black. But again, like I showed you with the archival ink, you could actually mix it up whatever way you want your collage sheets to go or what they need to match on your journal page if you are actually doing something to match. Now, you can see here I'm um, rotating this image. If you want everything to be completely lined up, you know, like a Tetris thing, you could um, easily do that. Just depends on what you want for your collage papers. So this is what I mean about when I was saying you can stamp ahead of time. So if you've got stamps that are, you know, for the destination that you're travelling to, so say you're, you know, you're heading over to Europe or the UK or something, we've got quite a few stamp sets, or Darkroom Door has quite a few stamp sets for those areas. So it means then you could use the stamps, create some collage papers, and then just have these on hand so then if you are traveling and you want these in your travel journals all you need to do is bring the collage sheet okay so I'll just do a couple of bits here over on this cream one and you can see already how nice it is as a collage sheet so it's really super quick and I've only used two stamps so it doesn't take many stamps to actually get a really nice design Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I will stamp the feather, stamp that a couple of times. Now this one is, I'm just going to change my block. So I like using a block that is just a little bit bigger than the stamp. If you're using a block that's too big, that's often when you'll get rocking and then you'll get like a double image. So it's easier just to use something that fits your stamp. do this so if you haven't already just in the um in the in the chat if you just want to uh, say where you are where you're from it's always nice for me to know where people are in the world especially because i'm sitting here talking about traveling and countries and and wonderlust is such a like a worldwide um community too there's so many people from all over the place it's really nice to all come together for something like this. So I just love seeing where everybody is, especially as I saw a few different time zones there when I first uh, joined the live or started the live. So yeah, I tried to uh, pick a time that was mostly suitable for most of the world, but um, it does look like there was a few uh, middle of the nighters, which is I'm um, pretty, uh, pretty impressed with your dedication to be up so late. Okay, so there's a few feathers. And now you can see why it's really beneficial to um, start here with the larger stamps. So then you see now all I have is just a few little areas. And that's only if you want to fill the whole thing. But it is always nice. It's amazing how much you can actually stamp. So I'll just do a few little postmarks here and there, just around there. Now, again, I'm not thinking too hard on this. I'm just, um, you know, chatting to you guys while I'm stamping. 
But sometimes that's the best way to work because if you sit here and try and make everything perfect, you'll try and line it all up and then you'll spend far too much time doing something when you know or you can see there how uh, easy and simple that was to sort of bring together without thinking too much. But the trick really is, is to start with the large stamps and then just work your way to the smaller stamps. So that's the little postmark. Now, what I'm gonna do now is, I'll add a few of these flourishes, but, whoops, stick on there. So this, this stamp set is really quite old. So uh, the back of my cling is probably a bit dirty. Now, if you need to, make your cling stamps cling again, just uh, give them a bit of soapy water and that should clean them right up so then they cling again to your block. Okay, I'm just adding a few flourishes just to add a bit more of a design. Okay, now this little guy. This is like a tiny little pen nib in this stamp set. So you can see how tiny that was because I'm Put it on my palm just in case you missed that. So that's how tiny this stamp is. And I love all the little tiny stamps in the stamp sets because you can easily use them to fill little sections like this. And if you are going to join me in tomorrow's video, then I'll be showing how you can create borders as well using this stamp set. It's a really uh, versatile stamp set. So here's just a few little pen nibs. I'll just do a couple over here on the cream one. Again, not thinking too much, just filling it here where there's a few little spaces. Okay, so there is our first completed collage sheet. So that's a nice little easy way to do that. Now I wanna show you a really hot tip for um, creating super quick collage sheets like that using a stamp set. I'm just gonna grab another one of these. Actually, I'll grab one that hasn't been creased up. And this time using, hang on, just grab it out. If you've got a stamping platform, and this is if you're using Darkroom Door stamps as well, or any other stamp set, um, that has multiple stamps in it. So I'm just gonna put this tissue down now. Let me see, I'm going to grab this, the mail art, sorry, this is the mail art stamp set. So when uh, you first get a Darkroom Door stamp set, they will be as one sheet. And then it's up to you whether you wanna cut them apart or not, or whether you wanna keep them like this. So I'm just gonna show you a tip on uh, when you first get them and before they have been cut up. So this is a complete stamp set. It's got a little release paper here to keep your cling nice and clean. So I'm just gonna remove the magnets cause I don't actually wanna keep this tissue necessarily in place. Whoops. <laughs> risky little things, those magnets. Okay, so I'm going to place this down. Now I might, and I'll do it this way. So I'm just going to place that down there and then place that down there and then that lifts up onto my stamp set. So for this one, we want a bit of red and green. Let's go with some vermilion and then the other one that we'll use a fern green. Okay, so I'm just going to lightly tap on the stamp set, just putting a bit of fern green on there, just randomly onto the stamp set, and then I'll just add a little bit of red. Now, for some areas, that'll blend those inks together, so it will make a little bit of a brown, but some areas will be the green and some will be the red. Now, some of it won't be stamped completely, but I just wanna show you a quick idea on doing a very fast collage sheet, just using a full stamp set at once. So if you don't have a stamp set that's complete in one big piece like that, 
all you need to do is if you do have a stamp positioner tool like this, then you can place a whole bunch of different stamps on the, uh, the plastic here. So whether it's uh, one of these, like the Tim Holtz one or the Misty, uh, there's a few different brands and then you can do that. So all you do then is if you want to go over here and then you can continue stamping and then move your tissue over this way and then you'll have a continuous piece of tissue. But you can see there how quick and easy that is to create some really nice Christmassy or whatever theme it is for your stamps are. Uh, collage paper. So I'll just put that back in here. So that's another little idea that you can do. And then when you're finished with your stamps, you just put it, well, you can clean it, but you can put it back in your case and then they're ready for storage. Okay, so that's that one. Okay. Next up, we'll just grab a few little book pages quickly and all those other substrates. And then I'll show you how you can use these ones. So these are the abstract stamps or any other like patterny type of stamps. So if you've got some of those, um, likewise with any sort of hand carved stamp as well. So this is what works really well on all of your uh, book pages and things like that. So I'm just gonna use a block, but you could actually just go freehand with this. I'll use the red because it's out ink up your stamp and I'll just go straight on to this music just to show you this one. So you can see there now how the music and the pattern are now joined together so it's not just that music sheet and then with things like this if you want to create a complete pattern uh, then you can just offset the stamping like that, and then you can continue on. You can change colors if you want. And then, these are really good warm up exercises as well. So if you like, you know, you jump into your craft room or whatever you're doing and you go, oh, I don't know what to start with. I don't want to just dive straight into an art journal page. I want to just create something. Um, then these are really good ways to do that. So you can see there, just, just that um, design over text just works really, really well. Okay, I'm just gonna go with a, another warm color here, just to make something that is nice and warm colors. And then you can yeah, choose whatever color you like. So these are just little dots. This is a nice little deep dark orange which is really good for anyone who's in autumn right now all of you guys up there in the northern hemisphere down here we're in spring so okay so this one here let's let's show you the little carve stamps and we'll do this with a purple so with carve stamps the good thing about those is you can use them with paint or block printing ink as well as ink pads. So they work really well with ink pads. They don't need any uh, block or anything. You just hold onto them because this one here, you can see how it's quite thick. So it's easy to hold onto. And then we're just stamping straight into our ink pad or pressing into our ink pad. Actually, I'll do a different color for there, but um, for the overlap. Oh, there we go. So here's a nice little tip. This paper here, seems to be a lot more um, like where the ink sits on top of it, where this one here, a lot more porous, and so that ink is kind of seeping in. So you can see how much darker that ink is on top. So there we go. And then yeah, you can wipe off your ink pad. Where's that lid? There. This one's over here. But what we'll do here is just stamp it off instead of cleaning. And again, you can see that shadow effect. So you can actually create lots of nice little designs like that. Let's get this firm green out. I think that'll look really nice with this purple. And again, whoop, that's really sticky, that paper. But look how vibrant that is. That's really nice. And then again, if you want to just create shadow 
stamping there onto those things. So any of these little book pages will work really well with those stamps or any kind of bold stamp because you've got these images or the text already on there. So you need something that's quite bold to go over the top. So that's just another idea. Okay, and then we've got things like the craft paper and these lunch bags. Now anything will work on top of here because you are working on just a plain background and likewise with this uh, envelope here as well. So I'll just quickly show you here just using some of these, actually I know what I'll do, the collage stamps over here. So these collage stamps, and that's what I showed you earlier in the video where I was using some of these collage stamps for um, creating some collage papers. And even though they are just one design like that, you can repeat them. So then you can create a full border or a nice little background or collage sheets. So this one here, I've got the red ink open. Might as well do the red ink. This is the, uh, the vermilion ink pad. So there's so many different beautiful archival inks. I like the really rich colors in them as well. Okay, so then stamping this up here. And so instantly this one's just a really, it's just gonna be a really pretty collage paper to add in. And you can use these as layers, but also if you're into card making as well, like um, if it's not art journaling, if you wanna use it for cards or any other mixed media, you can use all of these little pieces for that as well. It's just really handy. So you can see there how you can continue that on and create some really nice. Now this red is also going to look really nice on this craft. Anything works well on these kind of earthy colors. So just see what you've got in your art room or what arrives in your orders. Um, any kind of packaging. So this craft is really porous, so you can see there how it's really um, got a lot of texture in that stamp as well. And then just going up here as well. And then you can just continue that on. And then you've got a really nice piece of collage paper. Same thing with these marbled ones and then the gel prints. You can just stamp over the top. Let's use these little purpley ones. I'll change the collage stamp. We'll go with, actually, we've got some little scales here, so we can go for a little seasidey, mermaidy theme. I use the cactus flower um, ink pad. Inking this up. I'll put that on this one. So again, just with these larger stamps, you just need to make sure that you've got enough ink on your stamp. So you'll just move that ink pad around a couple of times on your uh, stamp just to make sure that it's got a lot of ink on your stamp. And then just pressing firmly down onto your piece there of paper. And because these are permanent inks, if you wanted to add some color inside of these stamps, you could actually go back in with a water brush and some distress ink or your watercolors or anything like that that's a water-based uh, material or uh, um, coloring, then you can actually do that and then go and color in your stamps if you wanted to add some color as well. So you can see there how you can continue that pattern on as well and you can go sideways to create a full collage sheet as well. So that's basically how you can stamp up some collage papers. So now I just wanna show you quickly how you can use them in your journals. So I'll just grab all the little ones here that we have done. So is, um, is anyone stamping along here with me? Let me know how you're going and what you've been creating. So I'll just leave that there for a sec. And then we've got our tissues. 
Okay, so when you've got these collage sheets or collage papers, so you can basically have like a little tray or a drawer with all of your stamped pieces and just keep them together so then you've got them on hand for your projects. And then when you're ready to use them, you can just tear them up, just depending on how you wanna use it and how big you want your piece. If you wanna go cut around it, you could even cut around it if you want. But if you just want real background pieces like this, you can just tear that up. If you want sort of like a triangular piece so you can use that on your page. Same with this one, tear it down there. So you've got all these pieces. So even on this craft page here, and these would look really nice um, even in the, the Dina Wakely craft journal. So if I just grab one of Dina's journals here. So this is a really nice coloring for this journal here. And then you can just stick these down in your journals to then start your art journal page. So that's how you can use like the book pages one or the, the sheet music. Same with these ones as well. You can just tear them up. Same with the envelope, just tear down the side and then you'll get like a random strip of your collage papers. So with the tissue ones, just move all those here. With the tissue ones here, I just wanna show you how you can stick these in your journals. And I'll just grab a journal. So for instance, here's one, this is one of um, the Dina Wakely journals where it's got the different substrates in them. And so up here, this is just a bit of a stencil background that I've started. And then I'll put away the Christmassy one. But this one here, or even if there's a lighter page, but no, this one will do. And so for here, you can just tear your tissue wherever or whatever piece you want it to, to be. And then using, I'll go down here where it's a bit lighter. I'll do it down the bottom there. That looks nice. And so I just want to show you here. These are three, uh, well, three different sizes of gel medium. So this is a um, ultra matte medium by Liquitex. So it's a larger bottle here. Uh, then you've got gel medium by Dina Wakely, which is really good for tissue. So both of these are great for adhering tissue. And this is just a smaller version of this one. So if you do want to take these on the road, if you're you know, going to a craft retreat or you're traveling somewhere and you just want to take your stamped bits, then you might want a little travel size gel medium. So you can just chuck this in your pencil case and then it's ready to go. So, but if you've got them on your craft table, I'll use this one here. And then I use a little silicon brush and then dip that in. And I put a little bit onto the page and then a little bit onto the back. Now, sometimes I use my fingers if it's a small piece, but because this is a larger piece, I'll just use this silicon brush. So dip that in. Now there's way too much gel medium there, but that's okay because when you place it down, so you wanna go wet on wet if you can, just stick that down and then very gently, you don't wanna go too hard, otherwise you'll rip the tissue. But if you do rip the tissue, it's usually very easy to then put it back down. I'll just move that up there so you can see it a bit better. Um, so it's, it's usually really easy to stick it back down anyway. So don't worry too much about your tissue if it does actually tear. And so then all we need to do now is just squeegee out any of that excess gel medium, put it back in the pot so you don't waste any. And you can use that for next time. Oops, going a bit on the edge there. There we go. And then that is now firmly stuck or when it dries, but it doesn't take too long to dry. But that is now stuck inside that journal and on that page. So you can see there, it's, it hasn't dried up here on the edge, but you can barely see where the edge of that is. So that's why using tissue, especially on this textured paper, works really, really well. And that's why stamping onto the tissue and then adhering it into your journals is just a really nice and easy way to add some stamped imagery to textured journals. You can also, you know, do it on flat journals as well. So going back into this Dilutions journal, 
So if I just set that one aside and then go in here and then get some of this creamy tissue and then adhere some of this to it. And now I'm just randomly tearing because I don't mind what piece it is. And I'm just going in the corner, but you could use it anywhere on your page because you want to build up your background however you want. Okay, and then again, and I'll just show you quickly how this creamy really does go well with the Dilutions journal. And then just add a little bit here. I'm just doing this really quickly, but obviously you can take your time when you're doing it yourself. And then just sticking it in your journal. So I'll just go ahead on and uh, just adhere this down like this. And while I'm doing this, I'll just talk about uh, Wonderlust and the live and um, just remind you that I'll be going live again tomorrow, which is 11 a.m. Sydney time, which I think is super early for the UK, guys. It's like 1 a.m. over there tomorrow. I'm not quite sure about other time zones, but please check out the um, time zone calculator uh, to see what time that could be in your region. I'd love for you to join me. I'll be doing stamped art journal borders. And again, all these videos will be available after the fact as well, if you want to catch up there. But um, if you want to see all the other uh, lives, there's uh, quite a few of the Wonderlust teachers who are doing lives this weekend, sharing their fabulous ideas with you. So you can jump over. The link is in the description below of this video where you can sign up for free for the Wonderlust weekend. And Wonderlust is also having a sale um, until the 31st of October 2022 for signing up for next year's course, which is where I'll be teaching along with uh, a lot of the other, um, other teachers as well. And we'll be sharing all of our ideas all throughout the year. Okay, I'm just going to wipe my hands here. So if you'd like to join us for next year, that link is also in the description below. So you can see there, see how you can't even see where um, that starts and finishes in terms of that tissue being the similar colour to the background of that journal. So you can just continue to like build that up on this particular page or whatever other pages that you need to start layering up. So I hope this has given you some ideas on how you can use your stamps in your art journals, uh, not necessarily just straight down, but using them in this way just to use up your tissue paper and also any other book pages, just grabbing a couple of these little bits and pieces that we did. And I really would love to see what you might have created using this technique. So if you are sharing your work, please remember to use the hashtag WonderlustLive and tag me on, um, on what you share because I'd really love to see what you do. But I hope you enjoyed this and thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you again this weekend.